It is good. It is good. It is good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Don't take it away. Oh, you're getting more. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, hi, I'm Amy Grolava and we're in my little kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me. Even though you guys are here, I still feel like you're part of my home. So anyway, uh, today we are making what I am calling unstuck cabbage soup. And what I mean by that is it's not a stuffed cabbage, duh. So it's got all of those wonderful ingredients in a stuffed cabbage that you may like or be familiar with. It's just not rolled up and baked in like a, a tomato sauce. I grew up with stuffed cabbage and maybe it's because I was a kid. I'm like, oh dear, you know, I kind of liked what was in it. I kind of like cabbage, but I just didn't like. It just rolled up in the cabbage for some reason. So I've never really made stuffed cabbage as a dinner for my kids growing up and all this other stuff, but I still like all of those elements. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to make a soup with all of those elements that you get in stuffed cabbage without it being a stuffed cabbage. Oh my goodness. So let's see how this works. Uh, but it's soup. So uh, you can change it up with some of the ingredients you like and don't like. Uh, you can make it a little bit hot by adding um, uh, red pepper flakes. Just add a little bit of heat in there. Typically, it's made with white rice. Stuffed cabbage is made with white rice. But I am going to use brown rice, and we'll see how that goes. The one thing I've noticed about brown rice is that um, it's very absorbent, like white rice. But I think it's a little, it's got, it, it has a little more of a chew to it. And I don't know, maybe mentally I want to say that it's a little more healthier, but who knows? So anyway, we are going to make unstuffed cabbage soup. So obviously we need some cabbage. I'm using lean ground beef over here. I'm going to put in one carrot. This is kind of a big carrot. So if you have a really thin carrot, maybe you want to go with two, but I'm using one. Just one little celery. I've got some bay leaf here. I've got some thyme. I'm gonna do, I don't know, just a little bit of paprika. I have some caraway seeds. Now that's gonna be a very interesting thing because it's with cabbage. I grew up with like having cabbage, you know, uh, with a little bit of butter and caraway seeds on it and then chopped up parsley. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to just add a hint of caraway seeds. Obviously you don't wanna overpower it. I've got Worcestershire sauce. I've got some, Parsley, I'm debating, I have one small onion in the recipe, but if all you have is a large onion, I would probably go with half because depending on the onion, you don't wanna overpower the soup with an onion flavor. Of course, I've got some garlic. I think I'm adding three cloves in it. Yeah, three cloves. And then I'm using uh, canned crushed tomatoes. Uh, in my recipe, I, I say two 14 and a half cans of crushed tomatoes, but of course, you can just do one big can that's 28 ounces, and then maybe save this if you need a little bit more or whatever, or for a smaller dish. And of course, I loved my fire roasted tomatoes, so we're going to add a can of that. Uh, I don't think typically in stuffed cabbage you use tomatoes, but hey, this is soup, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm hoping I have enough ingredients. As I mentioned before, Chris likes a lot of stuff in his soup. So I hope I have enough meat. I'm using a pound and a half of ground beef. Um, and it's lean, it's like a 90-10. So um, let's get going here. I've got my rice already cooking over here. Oh yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. And I have about, I'm hoping it's going to be about a, a cup and a half. Could be a little bit more. You know, the thing that I always get confused of is um, when you add cups of water and then dry rice, it's just like pasta. After all of these years of cooking, 
I'll add this like cup of rice. I'm like, well, gosh, that doesn't seem like enough rice. And I forget the fact that it like swells. It like gets bigger. And so anyway, hopefully I have enough rice. I'm sure I probably have too much. So I'm going to start chopping up this stuff before I get the ground beef going. And I'm just slicing up the celery. And I'm just going to do a rough chop. And of course, you were making soup, so you have that, uh, I never say this right because it's a French word. I think it's called mirepoix, mirepoix, mirepoix. Oh, that's my little daisy. You know, it's so funny with daisy. We were watching, Chris and I were watching a television show the other day. Oh, it was this version of Lion King. It wasn't the animated one. But with, you know, technology that they have now and making movies, it looked real, but it wasn't real. But it was an animation. I tell you, that, can you believe it? That was the first time Chris has ever seen the Lion King movie. I'm like, what? But then I forget, if you don't have kids, maybe, you know, you would have never seen it. Because when it came out, it was animation. Anyway. We have Daisy barking, her little growl, because she was looking at the TV screen, watching that lions and, you know, rawr and, you know, walk and everything. It was hilarious. Anyway, so I don't know what, oh yeah, because you guys heard her bark. So this is just gonna be chopped up um, celery. I'm just gonna chop up the carrots. And this is a big carrot. Now, because we're making this light, we're making a stuffed cabbage. Obviously, we don't want, you know, like these big chunks of carrot in there. So, I, you know, I'm just going to kind of do a rough chop so I can make it into more bite-sized pieces. And this soup is going to be layers. So what we're going to do is we are going to saute in a big pot, because everything's gonna go in the same pot. We're gonna cook the carrots and the onions and the celery. And I think that's it. You know what, it's so funny. I've, I've, I've been writing up so many recipes that sometimes I get other recipes in my mind and I'm making this one, so I'm hoping I'm telling you the right thing. And that's why I always say, if you're really a recipe follower, follow the recipe. Oops. That's what happens when you have such short arms. My cutting board is so close to the edge of the counter. I gotta be careful that when I chop that half the stuff doesn't land on the floor. Oh dear. Yeah, I think this is plenty of carrots here. And in the recipe, I, I, I do have one small onion chop. And I don't think this is too much, but I'm debating whether just to add a half, but I, I just need to do the whole onion here. Okay. Because I want to tell you guys all the right things, I think I'm going to, um, okay, what do we do? You know, I love doing these cooking videos for you guys because I get still, after all of these years doing my show, Little People, Big World, and doing these kicking, cooking videos, I still get so paranoid because I know so many of you follow a recipe, but often when I'm making food, I'm just like, it, it just happens. But I'm so nervous of not doing the right thing in the right order, which many of you have found on these videos, sometimes I don't do. The point is, in my mind I was going, do I cook the meat first or do, do I cook the vegetables first? But if I didn't have a recipe in front of me, it would all automatically come to mind. Of course, you do the vegetable first, you remove that, add in your meat and you know, blah, 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 anyway. Okay, let's get going here. I'm gonna. Get my little stock pot, my, my little pan heated up. We'll let that heat for a moment. Gonna do a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and kinda 
do the, um, oh, you know what? While my pan is getting heating up and I'll do a little bit of oil there in a minute, I'll get my um, garlic ready. Okay. And then why the vegetables are sauteing, I'll get rid of this. I probably should have gotten myself another um, cutting board. I'm just gonna do my garlic. I know it's, I, I follow a lot of people online, you know, social media wise that do tremendous at cooking. And I, I always get so many ideas. Some people are better at, you know, photographing it and creating all these videos online. And, you know, when it's uh, today, you know, I have uh, someone helping me, you know, do these, do, do the videos for the, the few recipes that I'm doing. But generally, it's just me. I tell you people, I don't, I can't do it all. And so my photos don't come out as perfect and all this other stuff. And then half the time I forget I don't have lipstick on or makeup and I'm like, oh brothers. So anyway, I'm gonna do about three cloves here. Three cloves. And I'm wondering how many of you grew up with stuffed cabbage? as a dinner, um, especially a lot of you young people. I mean, everything is so instant now, but I can so see how great and convenient that is. Because when you're working during the week, you just need something like, can you proportion the food out? Can you make it all happen and all I have to do, maybe chop a few things up, stick it in a pan and I'm all good. But then on the weekends, it's like, oh, let's have fun in the kitchen and let's cook. And um, so I think that's great. So anyway, I'm just mincing up the um, garlic here. Man, I love garlic. I had two big cloves here. I think, what did I put here? I'm gonna do three, because I think I have, yeah, three. So if you have little garlic cloves, that's fine too. But if you really have lucky enough to have some really big cloves, two may be enough. I think when it comes to like soup and sometimes dinner and maybe sauces, you know, uh, a recipe is important. But when it comes to soup and, you know, other dinners, you know, if you want a hint of garlic, if you want more garlic, add more garlic. I'm just thinking about it right now because, um, oh, come on. I have my garbage bowl over here, but yet I'm putting all the debris from the garlic over on the counter. Isn't that funny? I try and prep myself up and I still don't use what I prepped up. Crazy. Oh, my pan is heated up. You know, I did have enough oil in there, but sometimes the uh, spout <laughs> takes too long for the oil to come out, so I just undid it. Okay. And we're going to add the garlic just before the meat is finished cooking because I, I want to make sure I don't burn the garlic. Which people, I have had a tendency to do. I just spent the weekend with some of my grandkids. I had a great, great time. Oh my gosh, they're growing up so fast. I can't even believe it. They're just growing up so fast. Okay, I'm gonna try and be careful enough here and not add my garlic in with the carrots and all that stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna start sauteing the carrots and the celery. Oh, do you hear that sizzle? I'm gonna turn my heat down just a little bit. I'm gonna add in the onions. One thing about soups and other things, you wanna constantly be layering your food so it keeps uh, creating that flavor, that buildup to it. Is, uh, hang on, let me get one thing here. I gotta cut up the cabbage. I don't want my garlic to get lost in it. 
It's so funny. I chopped up three, which I thought was pretty large garlic cloves. But it doesn't seem to be that much. But it is. Don't be fooled. I am always fooled. And then sometimes, when I, even when I've made a dish often enough, but it's been a while since I've made it, I'm like, oh no, it needs more garlic. And then I taste it and I'm like, Amy, what are you doing? Okay. So I'm just going to decor this cabbage. I usually take the outer layer off because it, it's wimpy. It's like, I don't know, just not as great. Okay. Now, it really depends on how big of pieces of cabbage you want in your soup. I just sliced that up. I, have, I don't know. I thought it was a pretty, you know, look at my hands. I thought it was a pretty small cabbage, which is really, you know, what I wanted. So I'm going to just kind of cut each of those slices in thirds. And you have to remember that uh, this will all cook down. We're going to put that on the plate. I should have got a big bowl for this, too. What am I thinking? And any of those big hard pieces you don't want part of it, you know, just get rid of them. And when I'm talking about a big hard piece, it's like still kind of like the big cord, not the cord, um, the core. You know, this core part right here or some of these bigger pieces. Those are a little tough to choose sometimes, I think anyway. Okay, we're just going to pile that on there. And um, <laughs> I got another half to do. Maybe I'll get out of here and play. I know, it's so funny. You think I plan ahead. I, I do plan ahead. But sometimes I don't plan enough. So we're just going to kind of decor this. Or get the cord. I keep saying cord. It's really get the core of the cabbage out. <laughs> there we go. Good. I don't know. Maybe it's me. I just don't like these big pieces of the core. It's, it's just it's just chewy and it's just not good. It doesn't seem to um, cook down enough for me. You guys could see Daisy right now. She's so funny. She's just like Felix. Not that she's going to like cabbage, but um, she's always hanging out in the kitchen. And her head is down on the floor. She's just looking down. She's as quiet as can be. She's just hoping that I'll drop something on the floor and she'll be able to eat it. And so funny. I'm like, Daisy, bless your heart. You're not even going to like this stuff. So I'm just kind of getting rid of these bigger core rind parts. And it's not like you have to. I think it's just my thing. Okay. Okay, we're going to have, this is going to be a lot of cabbage. I'm hoping it's not too much. But if you're feeding a lot of people, this will not be too much. So I told Chris, well, you better be ready. We're going to be having a lot of food for a while. Okay. Uh, my meat is already over there. We'll get that going. I think we're all set. Let's head on over to the stove. My veggies here are becoming El Dante. Meaning al dente, the, they're starting to get soft, but not too soft. I don't want the, my veggies to be mush, 
before I've even, you know, have the rest of the ingredients in. And I'm gonna put all the veggies in here. And then we're gonna get ready to do my meat. I should have really put my phone over here. You know, there is something to be said about, what's the word again? Mirpa? 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 I, I can't even pronounce it. Anyway, the combination of carrots, onions, and celery. It's just, it makes a soup. One thing about using these types of pans, man, the handles get hot. Okay. I want to make sure I get all of it out because if I don't, then I'm going to have little bitty, itty bitty pieces of burnt carrots or onions. And you're right, I could have put the garlic in here, finished cooking the last of this up with garlic, but I'm choosing to do that when I'm about finished cooking the ground beef. Okay, I'm just gonna add in a little bit more oil. I do have lean ground beef and I have a pound and a half. We're just going to plop that in there. Break it up. And of course we've got to flavor our meat, so we're going to add a little bit of salt. Because the one thing I've really noticed, and I'm sure many of you guys have too, if you really miss this part of it, and you're eating like a soup or something else, your meat really lacks that flavor. It feels like you've got other flavors on top of the meat instead of it all being incorporated. So make sure you do flavor your meat. I mean, it doesn't take a lot, but... We're just going to let that cook for a little bit. I'm going to take my bracelet off. It's getting hot. Okay. I'm going to put this cabbage over on this plate. What else do I have to do here? And if you find one small cabbage to be too much cabbage, hopefully not, uh, just do half of a large one or just half of a cabbage. But I think cabbage and the stuffing, it's all a combination of the main ingredients. Okay, we're just gonna chop up a little bit of parsley here because this is gonna be just like a little garnish because you wanna add a little green just before you serve it. Isn't that nice? Sometimes I wish I was better at presenting my dishes, but I'm often kind of in a hurry. I don't know if I really am in a hurry or I think I need to be in a hurry. I, I have no idea. But sometimes I forget to kind of like finish it off. We just while the meat's cooking, we're just gonna kind of do a little bit of parsley here. Okay, I'm gonna crush that out. All right. I hear the meat. I better go stir it so it's not just browning on one side. This 
Something about fresh herbs, I'll tell you. Okay. Let me go get a bowl here. Oh yeah, I hear it sizzling over there. Okay, we got that going. Now, depending on uh, the fat content of your beef, I have a 90-10. Yes, it will have just a little bit of grease, but not nearly as much as you, if you did an 85-15 uh, or an 80-20, which is typically what's in most grocery stores in 80-20. Uh, I would drain off some of the grease because, you know, you don't want that kind of part of your soup. Okay, my, um, my meat is still a little pink. I'm going to continue cooking it for a minute. Before I add in the garlic. Okay, I think that's good. Oops, where did my garlic go? Here we go. I'm going to add in my garlic to kind of get that flavor going. Tell you the truth, I'm so glad I added the three cloves. At the time, I thought, wow, no, this will be good. Oh, I can smell it already. It's amazing, once your meat is almost all cooked and you still have a little pink, how quickly it, um, it finishes cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and splash in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, because again, I want that kind of incorporated in the meat as well. I just do a dash. I might have set a teaspoon or a tablespoon or something in there. All right. And I just have a little bit of the juice from the meat, but some of that could still be from the oil. So I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna add in my onions and carrots and celery here. I'm gonna turn down my heat though. Broth. And I don't, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I, have a little bit of brown sugar. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna use it or not. Sometimes when you have a tomato-based soup, depending on what the soup is, it can be um, very acidity, acid, like tart. And if you just wanna balance that out and mellow it out a little bit, just a little bit of brown sugar helps. Okay, so, okay you guys, guess what? I think this is one of those occasions, as you tell your kids, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. This is, was my case. I think I'm gonna readjust some of my quantities in the recipe because I, I thought this was gonna be, look at that, I thought it was gonna be a big enough pot. But I had to put the extra overflow into another pot. So, I'm just gonna readjust the quantities just a little bit. I would probably have to say just a pound of ground beef is enough and probably half a cabbage and um, two cups of rice I think are, is still good. Uh, I added three, but probably because I had a pound and a half of meat. So I think two cups of brown rice or regular rice will be good. So I'm just gonna re, uh, do the quantities. And if it's only for the two of you, just split the recipe in half. So we are gonna wait and have this soup simmer, um, I would say for about an hour, just to reduce the, 20 minutes, it could be 20 minutes, but if you do an hour on simmer, it's all okay. I think it just gives more time for the flavors to enhance and, uh, and it'll give time for the cabbage to also cook down. So let's see what happens in about an hour and we'll do a taste test and maybe Chris will even join us, I hope, thankfully. I hope. So anyway, okay. You know why I call it unstuffed? Unstuffed what? Cabbage soup. Okay. Well, you're already scaring me with the cabbage. <laughs> I forgot about that because he doesn't eat vegetables. But didn't you ever have stuffed cabbage? Uh, no. Growing up? No. Oh, I did all the time. And as a kid, I'm like, I don't know. It was just, 
it was drier because the sauce was over the stuff. It was a red sauce over the stuffed cabbage. But as a kid, I'm like, oh gosh, stuffed cabbage, it just looked whatever. And so it's like stuffed peppers. I've never liked stuffed peppers. I don't think I've ever had And it's a very similar ingredients to this. But so I thought unstuck because I like cabbage. It's ground beef. You got tomatoes in here. Instead of white rice, I chose to go brown rice. And that might be why. So what is a stuffed cabbage if this is unstuffed? A stuffed cabbage is still ground beef. It's got a little bit of onion in it, uh, you know, salt and pepper, some seasonings. I even put a little bit of caraway seeds in here. Um, Cut to the chase. What's the difference? You of this it. soup to stuffed cabbage? Right. Uh, this isn't a fully tomato base. It is, but it's not. Where a stuffed cabbage, you just put like a tomato sauce over the stuffed cabbage and you put it in the oven and then it bakes. This is beef broth uh, with crushed tomatoes and I like fire roasted. Okay. And the reason I ask is having never had stuffed cabbage, I don't know what it looks like. So you keep saying stuffed cabbage and I don't know what that is. Well, it's all the ingredients that are in here, but this is soup form. But what does it look like? I mean, is it's it a, a roll. cabbage? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, you should have asked me that. I did several the times. Be edit this part. Edit it. Mm. Um, it's like a roll, you know, uh, think of it like an egg roll or something of that sort. So you take a leaf of a cabbage mm -hmm. and then you just kind of, you put a little bit of the meat mixture, rice, ground beef and the seasonings and stuff like that. And then you just roll it up and you put it in a baking dish and then you put tomato sauce over mm. it. Okay. Yeah, definitely never had that. So yeah. Anyway, well, let's see how this is. I think I added a little bit too much brown rice. So I have to make an adjustment to my, um, here we go. Okay. Oh, well, it's hot now. It is hot. Isn't it hot? It looks well, hot. Well, here, have her take a picture of us. Oh, dear. Okay. Oops, sorry, babe. I tried so hard not to over salt it and just everything. Mm. Oh, I forgot. Oh, babe, I forgot to dress it up. <clears throat> just a little bit of parsley. Okay. Make it look pretty. Aww. A little fresh greens. Aww. Is it hot? Yeah. Very hot. Sorry, we should have tried this once we cooled it, the soup down. Mm. Mm. What? What do you think? I like it. No, you already tried it. Not really. But I, I, I mean, I like it. I don't think I'd add too many additional seasonings to it. I added some thyme. I added a little bit of caraway seeds because I didn't want the caraway seeds to overpower it, but just once in a while I'll give a hint. There's a little garlic in here. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? So that doesn't look like rice. What is that? It's brown rice. Oh, interesting. So it's a little different than white rice. It almost looks like barley. Yeah, it's brown rice. Oh. Yep. No, oh, I like it. So the cabbage, I, you know, I, I kind of have a little bit of a, a sour. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Or it reminds me of sauerkraut, which is made out of cabbage, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I thought the cabbage gave it just a hint of a little sweetness to it. Mm. What you may be um, tasting is the acidity of the tomatoes mm. and the juice from that. Yeah. No, I'm kind of thinking of sauerkraut, right? It doesn't taste but it's like, good. It's it good. doesn't taste like sauerkraut, you guys. But it does have cabbage in it. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, it's so good. Try this unstuffed try. cabbage it, soup, <laughs> which is very delicious. It really is good. I'm making food for a guy who does not I'm eat veggies. <laughs> anyway, give this soup a try. Check it out over there at amyrolloffslittlekitchen.com. I'd love for you to let me know what you think of these recipes and subscribe and whatever else over there. So. Enjoy and keep gathering around your table with family and friends. So.
Oh, my God.